So perfect, then we can start. Warm welcome to everybody to the Western of our webinar on functions and benefits of the SAP supply chain execution suite with focus on SAP transportation management. You'll find further information on westernaha.com, our webpage about SAP ETM in general, but also an extensive reference of SAP supply chain management and logistical solutions. Westernaha in general brings global experience and is a service partner of SAP. Indeed, our TM knowledge, part of our end-to-end -end supply chain management and warehouse logistics skills, are supported on every step of your supply chain. On westernhacker.com, you'll find also further webinars in relation to SAP extended warehouse management and also service part management. This free webinar will uncover the key business processes and considerations within the SAP supply chain execution suite with focus on how to optimize your transportation costs. Maybe also benefits achieved by customers, including a significant reduction in operating costs improved customer service, and of course, a better bottom line. The duration of this webinar is planned for 45 minutes, and questions during the session can be raised via the chat functionality of this webinar, and will be answered within seconds by our senior consultant and logistic expert, Mr. Felix Ops, who is also participating and will answer your questions. Um, just to keep in mind, please send your questions to the group, um, all panelists, there is a drop down. Just select all panelists and we can answer your questions. One final information before we start, the presentation that we are showing today will, dispatch, will be dispatched to all of you after the session. Within this webinar, we'll cover the following topics, the introduction to the SAP supply chain execution suite, the focus on SAP transportation management, and um, in point three, we are um, demonstrating a a live demo to just give you a flavor how the system looks like and what are the, the key functionalities available in transportation management. And as a final step, we'll just give you a roadmap or an overview on how to successful and optimize SAP TM implementations. The key learning points for today are to get a clear understanding of the technology capabilities available with SAP TM systems and its important functionalities. Also important to see how SAP TM ties into order management process and manage freight planning and what is freight tendering. We're talking about freight execution and the freight settlement process. The last key learning point I would suggest is to obtain techniques to optimize the performance of your end-to-end -end supply chain. Well, then let's start with the introduction to the SAP supply chain execution suite. Um, We'll start with a picture or with a slide that's really interesting. Can you guys imagine how many goods and products will be produced worldwide within several industries over the year? Just to give you a flavor, we did an investigation and these are the impressive numbers that we expect for 2014. It means, for example, 85 million cars will be produced, 1.4 billion tons of steel, maybe 8.5 million tons of coffee, and from a logistical point of view, all of this has to be transported. Well, that does mean for, for logistic companies especially that today distribution and transportation logistics is a very complex business. In today's business environment, which is dominated by globalization, increased price competition, and more demanding operational and financial performance, the pressure on supply chain management is increasing dramatically. Within the context of overall networks and logistic processes, the operation of transportation determines the efficiency of moving products and plays a crucial part in the manipulation of logistics to meet, for example, customer expectations. As you can see on the slide, we have um, four involved parties of the supply chain execution process. On the one hand, on the left side, you see the shipper, on the right side, the consignee, in between the freight forwarder or the logistics service provider and the carrier. In most cases, the consigner or the shipper is the party that requires the movement of the product. 
between two points in the supply chain. In special situations, the consignee can act also as an initiating party. Let's say shippers are the major players in the transportation network. They generate the transportation demand for LSTs, for carriers who supply the transportation services, and the network itself. The interaction of these players and their individual behaviors, expectations, and often conflicting requirements that we can see at the top or below affect their transportation decisions. I think this is clear. The logistics service provider, or short-term LSP, is the party that organizes the transports of products and cargo. The role of LSPs in transportation management often goes beyond transporting things from one point to another. The business changed a bit in the meanwhile, and the current situation is that to be successful within logistics, it also requires comprehensive services with a high level of process visibility and also flexibility. So from a system point of view, a transportation management system needs to help LSPs manage both the flow of goods and relationships between partners. Mm, when we go to, to the carriers, many carriers have their own fleet and operate on certain routes or for certain customers or segments. At the same time, they organize and render transportation services. Such enterprises, maybe you know already, as forwarders acting as carriers. To give you an example, in, in air and sea cargoes, uh, in air and sea cargo case, carriers are generally multinational corporate groups such as large shipping companies and air cargo subsidiaries of airlines. The overland transportation market is shaped by a medium sized and micro enterprise that operates small fleets. To summarize that all, the interaction of these players and their individual behavior, expectations, and often Conflicting requirements such as cost, transparency, flexibility, compliance, and customs affect their transportation decisions. Based on our consulting, uh, consulting experiences in the past, from our point of view, industries invest in transportation and distribution logistics for the following key points. Of course, for reduced costs, for greater visibility and decision support, for better service level to be your customer, for efficient transportation and optimal resource utilization, for increased efficiency and productivity, and for process automation and scalability. The idea of what SAP has and um, why we are having this webinar now to support and cover the mentioned requirements or shall, let's say challenges, SAP invented the SAP supply chain execution platform for planning, orchestration, and execution of the physical movement of goods. It consists, as you can see, of SAP transportation management, SAP extended warehouse management, SAP event management, and SAP global trade services. So SAP TM is it's the main component used to administer any kind of transportation processes, either shipper or LSP focused. It ties into order management, transportation planning, transportation execution, and freight settlement, and has direct interfaces to all of the listed modules brought by SAP. Plus, what is mentioned on that slide. There is also a direct, con um, a direct interface possible between an enterprise resource planning system and a CRM module for customer relationship management. But we will come to that point later on. The SAP event management, as shown below, is, is very easy to explain. It's a versatile tracking and tracing tool that connects to multiple SAP business use components to provide visibility of business processes and object status. Furthermore, SAP event management can be integrated in TM directly and 
allows automated process control for intentional reactions to events and status messages or response of unexpected events or missing milestone reporting. So it provides process tracking and control information that matches the process in SAP TM, maybe for shipment status tracking, for consolidation status tracking, equipment tracking, just to name a few of them. Um, there is also a bidirectional integration between SAP Transportation Management and the Event Management System. It means in general that SAP TM sends process and milestone information to SAP Event Management, which then tracks the process execution and compliance based on information and reporting received from inside or outside the company. Vice versa, SAP Event Management posts information back to SAP TM to, up, uh, to update the transportation processes. The SAP Global Trade Service System is a part of SAP Governance, Risk and Compliance Management. It, yeah, it takes, covers a wide range of trade compliance checks and processes that must be handled in transportation. And due to increasing legal regulation and security checks, transportation has gotten more and more complex from the view of exporting from and importing into countries. In general, you can say SAP TM, or better say SAP GDS supports SAP TM in order management area where functionality for general trade compliance and practice screening are provided. Furthermore, the whole shipment process is supported with export and import compliance. To finalize that, the SAP Extended Warehouse Management is a standalone warehouse management system, which has a rich spectrum of warehouse material handling, handling functionalities and supports within your inbound and your outbound processing of your own warehouses. Besides warehouse inventory management, there are plenty of support like unloading and goods received handling, quality management and dangerous goods handling, consolidation of goods into handling and transportation units, deconsolidation of transport and handling units, and digging and put away. Also, value added services, for example, are supported. Um, the warehouse management system is fully integrated in the logistical process of the SAP ERP, and so it's automatically integrated to TM as well. In addition, you can also connect SAP EWM directly to SAP TM. We've implemented that connection already for various customers and on various projects, and this is also now available as a standard future in the current release. But we will see that on the next slide. So then let's focus on SAP transportation management, especially on the functions and, of course, the benefits. So let's have a look on the SAP transportation and logistics roadmap after, yeah, let's say, less than successful start in 2007. SAP TM was redesigned and relaunched in 2010 as SAP TM 8.0 which was mainly focused on shipper processes, but also allowed forwarding by road transportation. In SAP TM 8.1, functionality, uh, functionality for ocean freight forwarding, FCL and LCL was added, and that opened the door into the LSP market. And actually, we have a lot of, pro, uh, a lot of projects within the, the LSP market, and um, later on with 9.1, um, the functionality was extended into air freight forwarding and in general on quality and processes for freight forwarders. And especially um, new functionality, the integration for the FCE platform. In the meanwhile, SAP TM 9.1 is released and provides a very, let's say, comprehensive transportation management platform which is broad enrichment for rail and truck carriers and for shipper as well. Based on TM 9.0, multiple enhancements have been made by SAP custom development, 
to support especially the railway business or container shipping lines. In addition, and in the in the current release, we have partial man management available, we have a strategic freight procurement tool, and of course a carrier collaboration portal. But now to TM. You can say TM ties in, in four different modules or four different corporate set processes. It starts from order management via transportation planning, via transportation execution to freight settlement. Order management is the main component for LSPs where they start the sales process for the customers, like transportation demand from customers received as a customer order and that creates a forwarding order in SAP TM. Just for your information, a forwarding order is an order from an ordering party to a carrier or an LSP to transport goods from a shipper to a consignee in accordance with agreed terms and conditions. From the shipper point of view, we have a direct integration um, to SAP ERP from order to catch to purchase to pay and shipper need to manage transportation for their own distribution and procurement tasks. It may also be applied in a tight collaboration in contract with the logistics. So based on the ERP integration, you can transfer based on sales orders and purchase orders. And they get replicated in TM and can be used as a timing object, but we'll see that in a few minutes. Also, freight orders are available in TM. This is just an order whose execution is planned by a carrier or the shipper, and the order contains the plan for the logistic, logistical processing and the execution data. Freight bookings are there as well, um, also with an addition functionality that you can do pre-booking, uh, means in general that you can pre-book capacity on ship or airplane, um, and later on use them for the pre-book orders for the planning. Within the transportation planning, as a second corporal uh, process, we provide manual and optimizer supported planning capabilities to SAP TM, and we have the possibility to have multimodal end to end planning with consideration of real and virtual transportation costs. It can be used to create a release ready transportation plan and with determine a list of transportation proposals or possibility routings of an order or such things. Transportation planning involves owning and making use of variety of network and resource master data that can be maintained in TM, resources with their capacity and schedules for occurring multi-stop connections. Operational planning is done in the transportation cockpit. We will see that in a few minutes, and uh, we will plan based on freight units. This is the own object created by SAP, with just a set of goods that are transported together across the entire transportation chain, and the freight unit can include constraints for transportation planning. Tendering is also a very important topic, and it becomes more and more common in our day, and that can be executed as peer-to-peer, -peer, broadcast, or open tendering means the partners may be integrated either via business, business messaging or through access by vendor portal. Freight tender and freight code objects make it possible to, for example, keep track of the process and provide the decision basis for carrier selection. When it comes to, to costs and freight settlement, um, revenue and profitability in transportation, we have a own SAP transportation charge management platform that is integrated and the component of choice, let's say, it integrates into order and subcontracting uh, processes, and provides structured, structured contract tariffs and rate data for all calculations you can imagine. The freight cost calculation engine analyzes the charge elements of a calculation sheet and calculates the correct amounts and the correct currencies and with the appropriate Change rate. And we also have an 
ERP integration there that we can transfer calculated charges, charges um, to ERP, do the, the invoice verification there and check against the carrier invoice. There's also possibility to have automized debit and credit memo check. So to summarize that up, as SAP PM is very flexible, um, each of these modules can be used without each other means you can say, okay, I'm just needing something for, for freight settlement uh, core process, then you can also focus only on the freight settlement core process without using order management, the planning, and the execution. In addition, there are lots of, as for each SAP product, lots of analytics and reporting functionalities available. The event management, as, as mentioned already, um, supports the track and trace and brings more visibility and flexibility into into the process. The import, export, dangerous goods and compliance management is available and a lot of document and output management. Also integration and uh, connectivity, especially to third party systems, are possible. Um, everything can be done automatically and um, depends on your specific requirements. Just one important point, um, there are also apps available where you can do live or real-time tracking on your iPhone, maybe of different orders sent to the carrier. Yeah, as written on the slide, SEPTN supports all mode of transports, the organizational capabilities and Functional abundance of SAP TM enables its use for a variety of shipper and LSP related transportation and logistic processes, such as mentioned on the slide, multi-stop, multi-stage, full truck load, less than truck load, and ocean carriage door to door or port to port for full container load or less than container load. Consolidated air freight scenarios, rate uh, carriage and intermodal processes are supported as well. Also, a lot of uh, reporting and analytics functionalities are available. We have role and user-based workloads where you can generate reports directly in the system, um, maybe based, based on actual reports. Um, you can use it for, for creation of operational data reports. We have also um, an embedded contextual analysis via the so-called context viewer that is integrated directly in PM and can give you lifetime reporting and dashboards and whatever you want to have. There's also the possibility to connect um, transportation management system with the um, SAP NetWeaver business warehouse. This is an enterprise-wide data warehouse that allows you to uh, collect data from all components of the SAP business suite. And the data is organized and provided in so-called input providers, which enable access to various queries to extract key performance indicators, for example, um, that are relevant for your business. In combination with the SAP business object tools, connection with many non-SAP data sources are also possible. In addition, um, graphical dashboards can be created easily and a new level of business intelligence has been introduced through the in-memory component SAP HANA. Now I have our first customer project where we use a HANA database and in contrast to conventional BI installations, when you use an SAP HANA installation, all data is permanently kept in memory and you can access, uh, access it very quickly. So to summarize that with SAP HANA, big data isn't scary anymore. Just as an example, a small overview, how such reports can look like and how you can integrate them in the system. Uh, maybe you're interested in having historical demand and forecast content um, in your TM system and this allows you to view, for example, historical demands you ship with your carriers directly in the request for quotation process. And it's completely flexible and you can personalize the chart and change the parameters um, 
shown in this example by different freight lanes, origin, destination pairs, mode of transport, or time pocket. You can have also um, a rate comparison cockpit where you can see how, how was the rate development over the past years. And when you do the discussions with your carriers, you have a very good base on what to choose and what to draw. Very quickly through that slide, and then we switch in later on in the system. It's just a small overview. I don't want to go that deep for the slide. Um, an integration uh, scenario for an LSP. As mentioned already, it starts with a customer, um, customer order and then a forwarding order um, created in the system, either electronically or manually. And based on a so-called freight unit, unit building rule, freight units are built. And freight unit is the smallest piece of transportation. It depends how you set up the rule. means um, the tracking granularity. You can have a freight unit that would be a container. The freight unit can also be the pallet within your container or the package on a specific pallet defined via the freight unit building rule. Once the freight unit is, is created, we'll see that in the system later on. Um, we start with our planning. We can do subcontracting and um, ask carriers to execute our, our transportation demand. And later on, the settlement takes place. And for, from an LSP point of view, um, we're talking about forwarding settlement documents. This is the, the settlement with your customer and the freight settlement document would be the settlement with the carrier. The overall view, um, it's good to just understand that PM can be integrated um, for logistic service providers in different modules. You can start your process in CRM with contact the contract business, and once the contract is, is, um, is created, it gets automatically replicated to a forwarding agreement, and then can, that can also be the start base plan, plan based on a forwarding agreement, your forwarding order. As mentioned already, the GTS global trade system can be integrated and reports and um, the warehousing management system as well. A bit different, the process for the shipper, as explained already in one sentence, you normally start with a sales order. This would be an outbound process, for example, you start with a sales order. The sales order gets replicated to a so-called order-based transportation requirement. And um, once the delivery is created, the outbound delivery on ERP side, it creates a delivery-based transportation requirement within the transportation management system. And based on then that, uh, that requirement, we start the planning in our transportation management system, and later on, the invoicing in ERP. Um, the similar process we will see within a few minutes when we go through the system, where we have a shipper um, that wants to ship goods from A to B, and yeah, that's it for the moment. moment. Just two slides, and then I would recommend we go through the system and the benefits of SAP transportation management. You can say that TM auto automatically delivers benefits to the bottom line through more efficient processes, through better integration, automation, and through a single point of control for all transportation, whether local, international inbound or outbound, and independent of transportation modes. Better cost control, for example, can be also achieved through integration with ERP and a wider range of reporting functionality. Therefore, reduction in transportation costs results of better planning, better data, and therefore better opportunities to negotiate. Also, much improvement on customer satisfaction due to better track and trace more accurate billing and improved visibility. So to summarize that up, transportation management is designed to help you to reduce the transportation costs by providing you more automated processes and an integrated solution. It can give you integrated inbound and outbound processing, automated processes, and also integration, as mentioned, to third-party systems, deep integration to SAP enterprise resource planning, and 
of course, a scalable system with a template that can be customized for different business units and processes. So then we are done for the moment with the slides. Um, now I'll show you a business scenario that can be used by a shipper that wants to manage domestic outbound trade. The shipper is a manufacturer and distributes products to its network of fans distribution centers, and third-party warehouse operations. The shipper has a logistics organization that is responsible for the timely, cost-effective, and efficient transportation of products between and from the shipper's facility and to the end customer. The shipper receives the order electronically or manually through ERP sales and distribution, performs a reliability check, plans and executes the transportation, the SMP transportation management system, and calculates freight costs in SAPCM before sending them to SAP ERP for payment. So, here we go. This is the TM system. Um, I think a few of you didn't expect um, a version based on um, based on Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. Um, this is the so-called NetBeaver business plan. Um, let's say in addition to the new way of storing and processing data, SAP TM also uses a new interface technology where former SAP applications relied on Subgroup user interfaces, the new application use web, web UI technology. The shift to, yeah, let's say web UI technology is accomplished by implementing user interfaces with that uh, web info for ABA. Uh, ABA. Um, but to tell you one thing, SAP TM cannot exist completely without SAP GUI transactions, but the border between the usage of SAP GUI and web GUI technology is clearly marked. While technical experts and consultants can continue to use SAPGUI for customizing and system monitoring, normally business users rely on the subnet view of business plan to form all business transactions. And the SAP net view of business plan is structured differently from the subgui. But we will see now. We will start in a part called ERP logistics integration and we just clicked on overview transportation requirements. Before the webinar, I created sales orders within an ERP system, and these sales orders are replicated in TM. I just click on randomly on one of these order, and then the order opens. We have different tabs available. We just um, have a look at a general data tab. Um, where we have all the information maintained in the ERP system and on the item hierarchy, we just highlight the product and see what needs to be shipped. We have a requested quantity of 22 bags, a cross volume of 220 cubic feet and a cross, cross weight of 2,200 pounds. Um, based on this order-based transportation requirements, there are normally, I just click on document flow, then it's getting here. Um, it depends how you set up the system. You can have your order based transportation requirement within your CM system. Do the planning because you have the better routing uh, uh, engine, you have the optimizer available. Um, do the planning, send it back to ERP, and ERP creates automatically um, a delivery, an outbound delivery for our case. Um, based on that delivery, the freight units that I explained already are created. You can see in that line. Business partners, always impossible, uh, always important in business transactions. We can see the consignee. We have the good buyer, we have the bill to party, and we have the payer. And normally, once this um, this order integration process is finished, we do the planning. And for the planning, we go to the so-called transportation cockpit. So 
so the transportation cockpit can be designed very flexible. Um, you can you can highlight screens, you can add buttons. Um, the look and feel is very very flexible. And we maintain it that way that on the left side you have all the base units that have been created out of sales orders and purchase orders for a logistic service provider. Um, you would have the base units available for different stages you are responsible for, and you plan them normally on your transportation cockpit. What I will do now is just sort in descending order, because then I see my last created base units. I did before before we start um, the webinar. And um, there are different possibilities how to go further with planning. You can um, just do the planning automatically done by the system or you plan manually. So it's possible to just plan our freight units based on existing vehicles or if you have the schedules of your carriers available, you can just drag and drop one of the freight units and assign it to a vehicle, maybe. And then the system plans based on that freight order. Takes a few seconds. It's just the demo system. Or give me a transportation proposal. Because if all the carrier contracts and all the rates are maintained in the system, the system can give us a proposal what is the most cost efficient route from A to B. And it gives us a proposal. I will just do that. And this is a scenario where we can decide between less than truck load and full than truck load and just choose one transportation proposal randomly. Don't consider if it makes sense or not. And we then just accept the planning and we save. And we scroll down and then we have a new freight order generated. The 103 at the end freight order was the one we planned manually. The other one was planned based on transportation uh, proposals. When we just highlight the freight order. We get an overview in the item, uh, item area, what needs to be loaded, where it needs to be loaded. We have all the details. We have the maximum utilization of each truck and, of course, the document number. And we can jump directly from the transportation cockpit to the created freight order already. But first of all, I want to show you another thing. And I got a timeout. So we just select another view of the transportation cockpit. Um, this is a view normally a logistic service provider can work with. Um, it's the transportation cockpit for a gateway planner, maybe. And um, this is the ocean case. Um, in the first example of the transportation case, we have uh, the trucks to plan or freight orders to plan. In the ocean case, we have already the pre-booked um, freight orders or capacity on the ships available. And then we can assign also directly freight units to uh, freight bookings in that case. What is also a very nice feature, I just highlight one. There is a map integration um, for SAP TM where you can see your transport and if you are using it in combination with SAP event management, you can track and trace in, in real time if you want to have it. Um, there are lots of or various map provider solutions available and they are directly integratable in SAP TM. 
very nice. There's also the possibility to plan directly in the in the map. You see all your freight units available, and you just assign them to available resources, to available capacities, to carriers directly. But let's come back to our example. We created the freight order. I just open it with all the information we needed, like the vehicle, the resource capacity capacity as mentioned and um, we don't have a carrier assigned yet and we have a lot of possibilities how to deal with that process. We can subcontract to different carriers, means the tendering process starts, you can have a predefined list where you send um, requests for quotations to the carriers and the first carrier that accepts your request um, gets, gets the quote maybe or gets the transport. Um, there is a rule-based tendering as well possible, but I will just show you um, another example where we do a carrier selection. Means the system offers us the best carrier for this freight order. We select a carrier selection setting or profile that we've maintained. And you can see the carrier selection optimizer started, organization run has finished, tendering for, for the freight order was done. And when we go to the subcontracting tab, you can see that we have two carriers available that have been tendered, um, one based on the backup price and the other one as well. And um, we can let the system do the awarding manually, uh, automatically, or we can and define which area to use. There is also the possibility to assign the carrier manually, type it in as our carrier one. And what we can do, of course, um, always important, and I can see the state first. Once the, the subcontracting is done and the carrier is assigned, and we can normally start with, with the execution or we can calculate freight charges. There is a charge calculation um, engine available. I just click on calculate charges and save. And then you can see the freight charges have been calculated. If there are um, products and goods uh, from different customers on the same truck. There's also a cost distribution available that uh, gets sent back to, to SAP ERP, where the cost distribution and later on the final invoicing can be done. So the final step normally would be, um, we, we start with the execution, then event management comes in place, we track the place, and um, as a final step, normally we create a phase settlement document, that gets sent to SAP ERP directly, where all the charges are mentioned, where the cost distribution is shown, and um, all the involved parties. And there is a button called Save and Transfer, and then you transfer your order directly to the, uh, um, to the ERP system. That was it, very quick and very short from from a, from a system point of view. Um, very important, there are a few things more cannot be considered within that short notice of, of a webinar, but um, there are lots of possibilities in SAP TM, lots of chan uh, chances, and we can see the market is growing dramatically at this point in time. Um, so um, just for the last two minutes, we'll focus on, on the final topics. And if you are more interested in live demos, just come back to us or write us a name. Um, we would appreciate that. Um, the roadmap to a successful PM implementation and the next checks, um, uh, next steps. Normally, we do the approach that we first um, offer a health check for your for your company and check on the KPIs and um, talk and discuss about strategy, starting with the concept and doing then a scenario analysis. If you are 
interested to know more, if you like to get to know the SAP transportation management solution better in order to assess potential improvement by using the solution, then we are more than happy to discuss your interest in one of the day workshops or two day workshops. Webinar also carries out feasibility studies and can complete the gap analysis based on a standard SAP TM system or over the whole supply chain execution suite. We also help you to do a business case scenario, including a cost-benefit analysis in order to determine the right solution for your business and in order to support management decision-making processes. Yeah, question ready for op operational excellence. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, you'll find further information on bestanaka.com about SAP TM in general, but also an extensive reference of SAP supply chain management and logistical solutions. In addition, you will find further webinars on SAP EWM and also service card management. And yeah, to summarize, um, I appreciated the session. Um, thanks a lot for joining. That concludes our webinar for the moment. If you still have questions or are interested in our product or in our consultancy, you can email us on info at westernacher.com or contact me or us directly.